When it comes to deloading, there are usually four schools of thought, and I'm going to leave my thought at the end, which I think is the best way to deal with recovery, especially if you're doing high intensity training, which I recommend for 90% of people that can do it. And the whole reason why this conversation comes about is most lifters, except the people in group one, which I'm going to discuss first, have realized and accept the fact that even though most of the time 48 to 72, sometimes 96 hours, which is four days, is enough for muscles to heal, eventually tendons can start to get sore. I had inflammation in my right elbow recently. It happens to a lot of lifters, whether it's axial loading on your spine, your lower back gets achy. There's a lot of things that you just can't always recover from in an average of three days. Your muscles may continue to recover, but other parts of your body like those connective tissues won't. And so there are four schools of thought when it comes to dealing with that. The first one is straight up just continuing your training and not deloading. This is an awful idea once you get strong and once you build an appreciable amount of muscle mass. The people who say this think that if they just adjust a variable, like say, if you're always training heavy, train with lighter weights, that you can continue to progress. That's true, but that doesn't mean that every once in a while you shouldn't take a week of deload or a week of what I'm gonna recommend at the end because you are gonna end up hurting yourself. Your joints cannot go forever. It's the same reason why people who work manual labor jobs tend to wreck their bodies if they don't take vacations. Heavy weights take a toll on your body. When you make the commitment to become a lifter, you're gonna understand you're gonna have aches and pains sometimes. It is just the way that it is. Barreling ahead and not doing any kind of deload for recovery is something that's relatively uncommon, and I hope it stays that way because quite frankly, it's pretty stupid. The second school of thought, which is common amongst a lot of power lifters because they wanna keep their neural adaptations, is to keep it up with the heavy weights, but lower the amount of exertion. So a very common example would be, let's say you can deadlift 405 for 10 reps. That power lifter would say, okay, I only do it for four reps because it's nowhere near my 10 rep max, even though it's still that heavy weight. Here's the biggest issue. It's actually twofold. The first thing is that's still heavy weights, which doesn't give your the connective tissues in your spine because you have ligaments in your spine. They don't get to recover because even though you're not exerting yourself, it's still 405 pounds, which is still four out of the 10 reps that you can do. The, the tissues in your arms, your shoulders, nothing gets to actually fully recover. So yeah, you are toning down the intensity, but you're still pushing around heavy weights. And here's the second part. You don't lose strength in a week. Most deload or recovery things last a week. If you're super strong, a week and a half, sometimes two. The average consensus is that it takes three weeks of not lifting and total inactivity to lose muscle mass. So one week of not touching heavy weights is gonna make you weaker. As a matter of fact, Switching from always doing heavy triples and doubles to doing sets of six or seven can bust through plateaus. Switching things up can help you if you're stuck. So insisting on continuing to lift heavy because you're scared to lose your strength adaptation, that's garbage, that's crap. Don't deload like this. I mean, if it works for you, it does, but I think this is the second worst way to do it. The third school of thought when it comes to this is lower the weight, and lower the intensity and just kind of go into the gym to get the blood pumping and all that. I kind of like this idea a little bit because when you get the blood flowing, blood is recovery, right? Blood carries all your nutrients. But I feel like if you do the fourth option, which is what I'm gonna tell you, it's really not that necessary to go in and bench 135 if you can easily rep out 225 for eight. Because though that's actually my number, currently I can bench 225 for eight reps. So there's no point for me to go over there and play around with 135. If anything, it's just giving my tendons even more of a break. And just like I talked about with my elbow, there's really no reason in my mind to do it. Although this is the best way of all the versions of deloading. So what's my opinion? What's the thing that I do? I do nothing. I stop training. I don't deload. I do absolutely nothing. I call it active recovery. I do a lot of lazying around some usually i try to make myself go for a walk again to get that blood flowing because if you genuinely train hard and intense high intensity eventually you're going to get sick of it your nervous system is going to be shot you're going to want to avoid the gym like a plague and that's okay that's the smartest thing to do remove yourself from the gym i'm only down here again because i enjoy making these videos for you as i said earlier it takes three weeks to lose muscle mass and usually first it's like water or something like that so a week of not lifting 
is actually a good thing. I found personally that I'm stronger when instead of deloading, I just do nothing, let everything just, all the fatigue drops like crazy, and I come back with that high intensity fire, three cups of coffee, just boom, 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 I'm ready. Nothing's swollen anymore, nothing feels stiff, and no back flare ups, I'm ready to just kill it in the gym. That's how I feel when I force myself to take a week of no resistance training at all. Cardio still okay, I wouldn't do high intensity cardio, I wouldn't even jog, you know, go for a walk, a bike ride, gentle swimming. But a week of just nothingness kills your fatigue like crazy. So now we've established that I want you to stop doing the traditional deload and fully take a week off. But when do you do this? Because some people will plan their deloads in advance and some people will just go until they drop. I actually do both of those things sometimes. Usually when I'm training for hypertrophy and bodybuilding, I go until... I get a flare up in my elbow and I just can't do it anymore and I take that week off and all the fatigue drops. A lot of people aren't a fan of that because they think you're running yourself into the dirt but really if you're smart and you just go, you know, maybe I can do one more week, maybe I can do one more week and then you give up and raise the white flag when your body's actually done, you shouldn't get hurt. But if you're starting to get flare ups and you're starting to get to that point and you continue to persist and don't just call it quits for a week and take that week off then that's when that becomes stupid and undisciplined. The second school of thought is actually better for power lifters because a lot of power lifting programs, including the ones I write for myself, yes, I train high intensity, even in power lifting, which everyone says is a big no-no. It's okay if you do it intelligently and mix things up. I have, I'll have a video in the future explaining how that even works. But what I'll do is I'll schedule a, a really high one rep max PR and I'll schedule it eight weeks from now. In eight weeks, I'm gonna set this crazy PR. Then after the eighth week, you take that recovery week. On week nine, you do absolutely nothing. You sit back and go, oh, I finally benched 315. Time to do nothing, because obviously 315 is my next goal. I want to throw three plates on there since I've had 303. That's really when to do it. You either do it when your body is like, dude, I'm tapping out. This is too much. I'm done. My joints need a break. You need a break. Stop it. Or you have an intelligent program and you say, okay, on the last week of this program, I'm going to go balls to the wall and I'm going to need a recovery week. This is the same thing I do with powerlifting competitions. After a competition, I do this recovery week. I do absolutely nothing because I maxed out all of the three hardest lifts in the gym. You got me crazy if you think I'm training next week, especially with my high intensity method. Lastly, we're going to talk about diet. A lot of people will just eat at maintenance. Here's the thing. If you've been bulking, eating at maintenance is actually okay. But if you've been cutting, a recovery week is the best time to actually eat in a slight surplus. I estimate my calorie maintenance is 2,900. I've been dieting at 23 to 2,400. So what I'm doing now is I'm eating 3,000 to 3,100. Just a slight 200, just a slight 200, maybe even 300 calorie surplus, which is what I would do at the start of a bulk, you know, a little 300 calorie surplus to get myself going. Why? It refills my glycogen. When I come back, I feel ready to start my diet again. And also, it helps the metabolism. My cut has been starting and stopping, starting and stopping. Why? Because I keep stalling and I have to lower the calories. But usually, when I give myself a week of eating in a tiny surplus, my metabolism kicks up. And when I get back, I usually lose a ton of fat really fast. And then I'm able to keep it off, which is the important part. Cycles of cutting for a long time, then eating slightly above maintenance and cutting for a long time and slightly above maintenance. That's what allows me to keep the weight off. Because again, when you eat above maintenance for just a week, you're not going to gain really any fat because you've been so depleted for so long. Most of you, including me, when you cut, first thing you remove is carbs. So by carving up, you just get bigger and fuller. Now my arms and everything just feels like just feels so massive. Why? Because my arms are flooded with water now because I'm intaking more carbs. I'm fuller this video because I'm eating more. And I know it seems counterintuitive because you've been cutting and dieting and trying to lose weight, but one week of just letting yourself eat is so good for you. It's not just good for your metabolism, it's good for you mentally. Because I don't know about you, but eventually I get tired of tuna and eggs and just like, that's it. And you know, some 1% milk. Ugh. It, it gets at you eventually. Now, again, even though I tend to say things very matter-of-factly and like th this way is the best way, I understand there are many ways to reach the same destination. Yes, I push high-intensity training. Yes, I push my deload method of nothingness. But if you can find a different way to get the same destination, your recovery is really good, your fatigue drops, 
then by all means, all power to you. But I think most people who sincerely train hard need a week, at least a week, seven days of not touching a weight, not even looking at a gym. Just forget the gym exists and mentally you'll be itching to come back. And if you're planning on doing a deload, I want you to give this a try. You're not going to lose any gains. I can promise you. you're only going to feel better if you're cutting. Eat a little bit above maintenance for that week. See you guys next time.